what tool can you use to improve the SEO on your WordPress website? Today, we're gonna look at the Yoast SEO plugin and the benefits that it has to offer. If you're new here, my name is Michelle and I release videos on marketing, websites, and all things designed. So if you find this information helpful, please be sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing if you enjoy these topics. Now, if you have no idea what SEO is, it stands for search engine optimization. And it's really just a strategy in order to get your sites to rank higher on search engines such as Google. So you have the ability to maximize your web traffic and your ranking if you can make your website as search engine friendly as possible. So if you're ready to dive in, let's get started. All right, as you know, this video is intended to show you how to optimize your WordPress content using the plugin Yoast SEO. So the first thing that we have to do is install the plugin. So I'm just gonna navigate to my plugins tab and then I'm gonna click add new. We're gonna search for Yoast SEO, and then you can see it pops up first. It has over 5 million active installations and many great reviews. So you know that this is a trustworthy plugin that you can use. We'll just hit install now and activate. And since this is our first time to configure this, we're just gonna walk through the process. We'll, we'll start first time configuration. I'm gonna start by clicking start SEO data optimization. And while that's running, we can continue on to the next steps. For site representation, it asks if I represent an organization or a person, I'm gonna choose person. Then it asks to select a user, I'm gonna select my user. I then need to select a personal logo or avatar. So I'm gonna select an image here. We'll just go to the media library and I'll just use one of the old logos that we have. Now I'll, for the alt text, I'm just gonna put bogus brands and select. We'll hit save and continue. Social profiles, if you have these, you can go ahead and fill these out. I'm not gonna bore you with all of those, but make sure to connect to any of the platforms that you do use. So I'll just hit save and continue. And then personal preferences. If you want Yoast SEO to track your data to help improve your site, you can say yes, track your data, or you can choose no, whatever preference that you have there, you can use, I'll just go ahead and check the yes. And then if you want to sign up for the Yoast newsletter, you can do so by entering your email address right there. We're just gonna skip that and go save and continue. So you have finished your configuration. If you want to register your product, you can click this button and what it'll do, it'll take you to this Yoast SEO website so that you can create a login and get the most out of Yoast by learning everything about it through a webinar. We're not gonna go through that now, so I'm just gonna continue by going back. So now that we've got everything installed, one of the things that I would recommend doing is going to the Webmaster Tools, and then I would get a Google verification code. You can do this for many of the search engines out there, but basically this just adds a verification meta tag on your homepage. So you can get these verification codes by going to the following webmaster tools and inputting the code into these boxes and then saving these changes. So now that the plugin is installed, let's take a look at how this can optimize your content. I'm gonna start with a post that I already have in my site. So I'm gonna navigate to posts here up at the top. And then I've just got sort of a, a dummy article called how can I improve my SEO for my WordPress site? So I will click the edit here. And then I use Divi. So you're gonna see this Divi builder. So this might not look familiar if you're using a different theme builder, but what you are gonna see when you scroll down is this Yoast SEO content box. And this is gonna be the same for pages and posts. So Although I'm using a post right now, you're gonna find the exact same information on a page. And so what we need to do in order to really optimize, you know, Yoast is really good about giving you kind of a score with a colored dot. So the red's not so great, yellow is a little bit better and green is optimized. So we would wanna insert a focus key phrase. So what is this content about? So for the focus key phrase, I put in improve SEO WordPress 
And you can see once I did that, the little indicator here turned to a yellow, kind of not so happy, kind of neutral face where we can see that the readability is in the green right now, but the, the actual focus key phrase is, is in the orange. With my Google preview, I can see that here's what the mobile result will look like and here's what the desktop result will look like. So if I need to make any alterations, because right now it's just pulling in some dummy copy. So if I want to put in a description, all I need to do is type this in the box and then I will be able to see it in the preview update for what it's gonna look like when this comes up in search results. And so I just type some quick text there. It's about a sentence. And so it's going to tell you with this indication bar here, if you're putting in enough content, because if you keep typing and it's going to reach the end of this little indicator bar, what would happen is that your search results would probably cut off. So you kind of want to hit the target once it's in the green, which is giving it enough content to be able to be seen in the search results. And so as I type this out, you can see that some of these are highlighted, which are from my focus key phrase. So that would be really important to include. Include some of those words that you have in your focus key phrase in your meta description. The slug here is really just the URL of the post. And so I do see that the SEO title is showing up at the red bar. So we might need to adjust that a little bit. I might take away some of these. And if you need to add in variables, you can. But as I'm adjusting these, you should be able to see this update. So we've got title first. And that might just be all that I need there because that is what that blue line is showing. If because my title is just a little bit longer here, anything else that we've put in isn't really going to show up. So I'm probably just gonna leave it as the title. If I wanted to customize that, I could even make it shorter by just typing in the box. Maybe I would put improve your SEO for your WordPress site, something like that. So you've got some options. You don't have to just stick with what the variables allow you to do, but you do wanna make sure that it's in the green zone and not the red. So now we can move down to SEO analysis. And this is really just gonna provide a checklist of things that you need to consider. So we've got problems, we've got improvements, and we've got good results. So there are some things that we've done really well. Those really contain either the key phrase length, we've got the meta description length, we've got the key phrase in the slug, the text of the entire post contains 522 words, so that is considered good, and the SEO title width is also great. So we can look at some of the things that we need to improve. Now, I will say, don't live and die by this checklist. If you cannot get everything to go into the green side, of good results, it's okay. Just try to fix as many as you can. So that will just help your search engine optimization a little better. So one of the easy things that we could do right now, we can see that we've got no outbound links, we've got no internal links, we've got no images. These are easy things that we can add to help fix this. So really our goal is to get this orange dot into the green. And so once we do that, then I will consider it a success. So let's add, let's say a featured image would be great. I'm going to upload a file. So I've just got an image that is got a computer. And the one thing I do want to make sure that I do is insert some alt text. Alt text is how search engines sort of identify the images that you're putting in there. And so these are the terms that they're going to be searching for. So it's good to make sure that you have alt text for all of your images and to make sure that they are relevant to your content. So I'm just going to put search engine optimization strategies and then set my featured image. And now that I have that in there, we can see that that image is moved down to the good results. So another thing that I would want to make sure to do is add some outbound links to maybe some other pages and some links to internal pages. All I would need to do is go up to my text. And then again, because I'm using Divi, this got little window pops up. And so maybe I want to link to where we're talking about Google Search Console, maybe it would be a good idea to add a link to that. So I'll just do that really quickly. We'll apply that link. 
And then, you know, I might want to find a way to add a link, whatever would make sense. You want to make sure that you're linking to another page. And so let's say at the bottom of our article, we had like a little contact us. You know, if you're needing help, you could contact us. Whatever would make sense for your content. We'll just put in our contact. We wouldn't need the whole thing. So we'll just hit apply. And then that way we've got an external link and an internal link. Let's take a look and see if that has improved any. We've got outbound links, which is good now, and we've got internal links. So those were super easy to take care of. Let's take a look at some of the other things that we could probably fix. And here's an interesting one, the image key phrase. So it is really looking to make sure that our images contain some of those key phrases that we've chosen. So maybe we need to go and update that. So if I go back to my image, instead of search engine optimization strategies, this is where I might need to say, improve your SEO for your WordPress site. We'll set that and then let's see that actually fixed that. So that was one more thing. And now you can see that we're in the green. So uh, technically this considered pretty good. If we want to go through the rest of these, we can. We can try and going and altering our content to see if it improves. And so, you know, the key phrase in the introduction, the key phrase density, it's looking for at least two times in the text, key phrases in the subhead. So I have to go back and alter the content of my post in order to get this to be 100% optimized in Yoast SEO's eyes. But we're doing a pretty decent job by just going through this checklist. So if you're uncertain of how to optimize your content for SEO, it's kind of impossible to understand all the ins and outs of the algorithms that change all the times. This tool, this plugin here, Yoast, will help you optimize your content just a little bit better. So if I scroll back up to the top, we can see that the SEO is good, the readability is good. I will probably just hit update on that. And so that's really how to optimize a post. I do wanna show you one other thing that I think the Yoast SEO tool is really good for. We're gonna consider this a little bit of a bonus tip. So if I go down to Yoast SEO over here, I wanted to show you a quick tip about open graph images. If you're not familiar with open graph images, those are basically the default images that you can set when you are posting links to social media accounts. So when you post a link on Facebook or Twitter, these links often have an image associated with it. And sometimes if you don't have your open graph images set, it's just gonna pull random content from your site, which is not always ideal. So there is a way to actually set open graph images through Yoast. And what you would have to do is you scroll down to the social tab under Yoast SEO, and then you're gonna see these tabs, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. So if I go to Facebook, and it says add open graph metadata, I have that enabled. So what I would then need to do is to choose an image and you just upload it to your media gallery or choose one from your media gallery that you have. Let's say I wanted to use this image and hit select. Anytime I post a link now in Facebook, this image is going to be associated with it. So if you have, ideally, this is probably gonna be something where if you have your logo or sort of a brand image that you want to use or be known for, that is what I would set these images as. You can do the same with Twitter. And so you can just add your Twitter card and you can choose with like a summary with a large image or just a summary. So you've got some settings there as well as Pinterest. You can do the same there. So. Setting that image in the Facebook tab is really what's going to make all the difference. Now, you always have the option to upgrade to Yoast SEO Premium. 
I think that you could probably get away without doing that immediately. You're obviously going to get more options, but if you're looking for sort of a quick way to just get started with optimizing your content for SEO, then I would just say go with the free one to start off with. And then if you feel a little bit more comfortable and want those extra add-ons that the premium tier offers, then I say go for it. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them if I can. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.